think Kata did well. I think I would have probably gone for the, the machine just for consistency and for doing it over the length of the season. Has David broken his you know uh, habit of a lifetime and gone against the Saints player? No, I picked Morgan Knowles. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely sensibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, he's been incredibly important for Saints this year. Him and Bentley at the back of the pack are our tackling machine. They're the reason why we're able to dominate territory significantly uh, against teams, in- including Wigan in the grand final, because they 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 are so difficult to, um, uh, to get past down the centre. So he's not the most exciting loose forward. He certainly isn't a Sean O'Loughlin with his hands, but uh, in term or, or indeed uh, with his carries. But in terms of his defensive quality and effort and his uh, ability to knit the team together, he's been vital for us. So I chose Morgan Knowles. On the other hand, I, I'm not really sure, sure I noticed much from Luke Yates, but Joe Cater and Michael Lawrence have been have been terrific as well. And uh, I wouldn't have had a problem with either of those. Joe, Joe Cater looks like a really exciting uh, forward, I think, and is going to be really interesting to see how he goes next year. Yeah. All right. I, um, I thought this was a hotly contested category. Joe Cater, for me, deserved his place on the shortlist because he wasn't expected to... I didn't expect him to even get into the match day 17 at any point this year. Um it really went way better than I expected him to, and he massively impressed me um, as a result. But he didn't quite, he didn't quite make the cut to be the the best loose forward. Morgan Knowles would have been was my choice last year. He was the outstanding loose forward last year. I think this year he was not quite as good as he was last year. Then Michael Lawrence, yeah, the machine. We talked about it so many times that he went over 100 metres and over 40 tackles. But do you know who else did that a lot of times this year? Luke Yates. And I think Luke Yates on top of that added a bit more threat in attack with those metres. He, he, you know, Michael Lawrence didn't score a try. Luke Yates did score some tries. He finished some stuff off. I think Luke Yates added more when he was on the pitch for Salford than Michael Lawrence added for Huddersfield overall so I went with Luke Yates but it was so close between the two um, that that it, it took me a while to actually decide but Luke Yates for me was the one Al Interesting well it appears that the majority um, went with Morgan Knowles they had 46 he had 46% of the boat which made it two years in a row for him in the SLP Dream Team Um even if, yes, perhaps his performances weren't quite as outstanding as they were in 2019. Yeah. So, so should we run through the team in full then? Yeah, do it, yeah. Yeah, so we had, for those not listening at the start, we had Bevan French at fullback. We had Ash Hanley and Christian Inu on the wings, Kevin Nagama and Toby King at centre, uh, Jackson Hastings and Aidan Caesar at the halves, we had a front row of Alex Wormsley and Mike Cooper, sandwiching James Roby. Um, second row, Liam Farrell and James Bentley. Don't know how there was ta- not space for Tanganoa in there. And Morgan Knowles was the number 13 and locking your scrum. So we had seven different teams represented this year. Five from your champions, St. Helens. Three from your runners-up, um, Wigan Warriors. And the two differences from the Super League Dream Team... Were, were three differences sorry from the Super League Dream Team were Kevin Naguama in the centres rather than Conrad Hurrell James Roby at hooker rather than Man of Steel Paul McShane and James Bentley in the second row ahead of Kalepi Tanganoa yeah I, I, I think our team's a better balance oh. I know that I know them. I would say. We might be biased, guys, but this is the better team, isn't it? This would win over the other team. Oh, yeah. We're, we're... Oh, it, it, it's gone. His <laughs> <laughs> microphone's gone. We, we, we haven't cut him off in some in a fit no. of peak. It's all right. Exactly. I mean, 
Give me now. He managed to say all these ridiculous things, and then when he was saying something sensible, he, he's gone. <laughs> no, I can hear you now, Tim. No, no I, I can't. Think, I think any, any side with James Roby in, you know, it's going to be better than with Paul McShane, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, so. Rather than going for it... Uh, rather than throwing in a break before we do this I'm just going to run through because this isn't the end of the voting for 2020 for the Super League pod we've of course got the 2020 sloppies coming up um, so I'm just going to run quickly through with the shortlists um, rather than dwelling on any of these voting's going to open when you're um, after you've listened to this show so um, so look out for the, the chance to vote on this but for player of the year we've given you the final five for the Man of Steel to pick from but of course, if you don't think any of them, um, Caesar, Hastings, Coote, Farrell or McShane um, are with actually the best player in 2020, and then you can throw your own choice in too because we'll give you the other option as we always do. Um, for Young Player of the Year, we've given you the three choices named in the Super League Awards shortlist finalists, which was the winner Harry Newman, Harry Smith from Wigan and Grand Final winner Jack Wellsby, who... Um, should be the winner of this award uh, but we've added two young forwards in as well in the shape of Ethan Havard and Mikolai Olejski as well um, so again you can go away from that short list but for your vote to count it must be a player who was aged 21 or under at the start of the season if you can remember that it was um, January the 30th uh, no 29th 30th 30th something like that old player of the year um, a man who must be 32 or older back at the start of the season um, this this shortlist from us features previous winner James Roby uh, is retiring teammate Zeb Taya Wigan's Tommy Lulawai those three were all on the on the shortlist last year as well Matt Pryor from Leeds and Chris Ninu from Salford make up the shortlist of course if you want to pick someone else you can pick other and go with your own choice for coach of the year we've given you a short list of the three coaches who led their team to silverware um if you think another is more deserving then with all the us with all the awards you can go with for someone else but it's the shortlist is agar lamb and um wolf there's no worst signing this year there's been enough negatives in 2020 without us adding to it so we're not going so we've dropped that award uh, for one year and um, we've done the shortlist a little bit differently for best signing of the year we, what we've done is we've picked an option from every team you can go off that list as well if you like so if you prefer someone who we've not picked as the best signing for any of the teams um, pick someone else remember you don't have to be like David you can vote for a player who doesn't play for your own <laughs> club uh, we might even respect you more if, if you if you don't pick your own player but, but we'll let you have a crack at that um, again no overrated player award this year but there's a free choice for underrated player no short list given does that mean it goes automatically to Kevin Brown <laughs> um, I, I think whoever won it last year retains it yeah <laughs> I can't remember who it was um, remember you don't have to uh, sorry yeah so there's no short list because it means something different to everyone um, underrated player We've given a free list for you to go whoever, and let's see if we can get a clear winner. I'd be shocked if anyone got more than 6 or 7% of the vote, but um, I'd have no idea who I'd pick for underrated this year. Maybe Michael Lawrence. Um, we couldn't cut all the negative awards. We had to keep the See You Next Tuesday award. The SLP sloppies would not be the same without the See You Next Tuesday award. Um, with how it's destroyed the year, COVID-19 heads the short list on the See You Next Tuesday award for general shittery towards rugby league, I suppose. Um, the shortlist also features David Argyle and Robert Alston because both sides of the fence of that argument might have reasons to vote for those guys. But feel free to go elsewhere as well if you like. Um, Listener's Listener of the Year is another one where it's a free, for, free from a short list because we don't want to pick our favourites of you guys. We want you guys to pick your favourites. So whoever has been your favourite contributor that you've listened to the, the, the fan views of this year then um, please pick that person for your listeners, listener of the year. And then um, in the sort of outside of Super League category, we've brought back Best Brit Abroad with Tom Burgess, Herbie Farmworth and George Williams on the shortlist, plus the shortlist free match official of the year and Community Rugby League Champion of the Year awards. And remember, it's nice to be nice about the match officials. Um, so, yeah. 
that... is Robert Hicks's beard a separate entry to Robert Hicks? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We, we did talk about bringing back Beard of the Year, didn't we? For Robert Hicks, but he would have won yeah. it in a landslide. If Robert Hicks's beard gets enough separate votes, it wins Referee of the Year. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> let, let the people decide. It could also be an option for Community Rugby League Champion of the Year, if you like. It, could, could he be underrated player? This is this is the question. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> don't put the idea in people's heads. To be well, fair, I, Sam Tompkins... I, I don't need Sam to. Tompkins and John Wilkin normally get more votes for Referee of the Year than, uh, than Robert Hicks, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> right, but that... That's out there for you to mull over and vote over over the next few weeks, um, before we, a couple of weeks or so before we do the SRP Awards. Um, that's the episode sort of done, other than to wrap up with a quiz. So we'll move on to that now. Right, guys, I'm glad you've all stuck with it till the end because the quiz would have been rubbish if I was just delivering it to one person because I've kind of done it as a closest answer wins kind of scenario. Um, so I've got three questions. So what I'm going to do is you're all going to have a chance at going at going first um, and, and last on this. And they're all um, kind of shot in the dark kind of guesses for you to make. Come up with, your, come up with what you think it might be and, and, and have a shout out for it and uh, see who does best so we're gonna do the first one um alan can have first crack david can go second and tim can go third and then we'll we'll flow through like that so the first question is how many players made their super league debut in 2020 holy moly um quite a few um so who made their Super League debut? Yes. So it could be an academy talent rising up through the ranks. It could be an overseas star. It could be a guy joining from Rugby Union. Could be some Wolfpack players. Yes, they are included. Um, do, 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 their do, do, I'm... counted if their points didn't. Oh, wait, they didn't get any points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say uh, 45. Okay, so David. I am going to go lower than that. I'm going to go for 38. Okie dokie. Similar ballpark, though. Tim, what about you? What do you think? 64. 64. Right, well, the actual answer by my statistics, so they are potentially wrong, but they are... Uh, what we're going on. Final. Yeah. <laughs> it's 62. Oh. So Tim is the winner of that one. 379 players appeared in match day squads in 2020 in total, and 62 of them got on the pitch for their first taste of Super League. The oldest of those debutants being 35 year old Sonny Bill Williams. Whilst at least 24 were born this century, um, and then there's a number that I don't have the date of birth for yet, so because I've because I can't find it on the internet, so I'll have to wait for the uh, rugby league yearbook to to find out. But I'm guessing a few more of them were born this century as well. So Jesus. so yeah, a lot of young players getting the that getting their bows this year. Question two: How many of the 379 players that appeared in match day squads this year scored a try? And we're going to start with David on this one. I would say that it would be about 200 different try scorers. I'm going to go for 200. 200. Tim? 157. Do you know what? I know my stats are wrong because I've found a player that I played that I missed <laughs> off. No, don't undermine our confidence. This is like Matt Hancock. No, because I hadn't added Ronan Michael in, so it probably should be 63 debut on, so you were even closer, Tim. But anyway, um, 
157 try scorers out of the 379 from Tim. What about you, Alan? Uh, I think there's a lot of players who 